Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us, sentiment, mother T. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely T TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers, I hope you guys are doing good today. So, I wanted to come on here because a lot of people have been wanting me to talk about the whole R. Kelly situation with his daughter. This entire situation is extremely disturbing, but it also has a lot of people questioning the timing, what she's saying, and if Drea Kelly, aka R. Kelly's ex-wife, who won't leave his last name alone, is somehow in the mix, okay? So I want to go ahead and kind of break down this whole situation for you guys. So if you guys do not know, about seven days ago, we posted on my Instagram page that Drea was working on a tell-all book. And so with that book, she also put out like a small video letting the world know what she was working on next. So I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys what she posted on social media. So Drea says, I'm a beast and a butterfly. God said so. The time has come to disrupt the deception. For years, people have spoken on my life without knowing anything about me. How crazy it is to speak on someone you have never met or had a conversation with. Fact. Well, the time has come to speak without fear. No more forcing a smile to get through the pain of being me. No more be nice to please an unpleasant world. My book is going to set so many free. If you have a problem, it's not with me. Take it up with God. This is his will and it is so. Then she posted this video right here. Everybody wants to be on the red carpet, but nobody wants to know what's under the red carpet. On the red carpet is such a facade. It's the lights, cameras, everybody knows your name, opulence, diamonds, and the popping of champagne. But under the red carpet is pain, trauma, abuse, deceit, lies, and it might even cost. All right, so you guys just heard what she had to say, and it's very funny that she's saying on the red carpet, everyone knows your name. Ma'am, before you got onto Hollywood X's, nobody even knew that you existed. My whole childhood growing up, you know, listening to R. Kelly's music, seeing him at award shows, I never saw Drea Kelly. Nobody ever mentioned this man being married. We knew more about his ties to Aaliyah as children than we ever knew about Drea. We didn't know anything about Drea Kelly until she got onto Hollywood X's and she was using his name. That is when we first found out that he had a wife and that he had children. I mean, I'm not saying that people didn't know that she existed, but for the majority of the public, we had no idea. So let's not act like, you know, his name is not bringing you status and fame and notoriety because you're still using his name to this day. So anyway, she said she's dropping her book. Me personally, I don't care. I'm not a fan of Drea Kelly. Something about her just gives me the ick. I believe that she was well aware of what her husband was doing, especially to a lot of the real victims, okay, minus Faith Rogers, um, to a lot of the real victims. She knew, but she sat there complacent because Again, she was living a particular lifestyle. So she really didn't care what her husband was up to as long as, you know, her lifestyle was being funded and her and her children were being taken care of. So now we fast forward and all of a sudden we find out that on top of her writing this tell-all book, she's also doing a documentary. So then she did an interview the other day with the Atlanta Star. I'm going to go ahead and just play a snippet of that interview. I want you guys to go ahead and check this out with me right here. And what was the last conversation like? Don't play with me. Don't play with my kids. I'm not that little girl. I'm not that 19 year old that walked into that audition. I'm a lioness and these are my cubs. Don't play with me. Mm. Now with the children, where, how was he as a father? Horrible. Really? <laughs> I mean, they're and I, just... And I, uh... I think that men in a position of power can confuse being a provider with being a father. Mm. Because there's a mansion, because there's a nanny, because there's a driver, That's thing, those are things that you provide. Being a father means you need to be present. And at the end... I agree with her 
in this instance. And this is what I say about the Nick Cannons, the Cam Newtons, just because you're providing financial assistance, nannies, cars, drivers, you know, a mega mansion for the kids to come and play on the weekends, does not make you a father. A father is somebody who is in the home, who is there doing all the little nuances of being a parent, giving the children baths, helping out with home. You know, it's being a full-time parent. Regardless if you and the other parent are together, you should know how to co-parent and be a father, be there. Not just handing the child off to a grandmother or a nanny. So I definitely agree with what she's saying right there. But I'm going to leave her... So I definitely agree with what Drea, so I definitely agree with what she's saying in this instance. We're going to go ahead and continue. End of the day, you're your own boss. So the excuse of I was in the studio or I'm traveling, I'm doing this, your children become before everything. Because at the end of the day, you never sell another album. Or if you're in prison, you're still somebody's father. What is what is it like with the children and their relationship with him now? This is going to sound odd to a lot of people. I really don't know. They're adults now. I have stepped away when my, when Robert Jr. turned 18, I was like, whatever you decide from this point, if you want to call him, you don't have to get permission. If you want to go visit him in jail, you don't have to get my permission. You're a young adult now. That is up to you. But I've always been that mother that I knew how to separate him not being a good husband and the relationship with him and his children as their father. Mm. Those are two separate things. Mm. So whatever my children feel, if you love them and want to see them, great. Yeah. If you hate them and never want to talk to them again, great. That is your decision. Because I know what it's like to be his ex-wife, his wife. I can kind of separate myself from that. They share DNA. That's forever. How did your parents feel about him? Knowing the, the cycle of abuse that you observed, what was their viewpoint on him as a person and his treatment of you? I will tell you this, my dad is a retired naval officer and he said the next time, if ever it comes to it, y'all will see me on the glass like this. So y'all figure that out for yourself. My dad was like, I better not ever run across that man on the street, ever. But the respect I have for my father, he's like, but because that is the father of my grandchildren, that is the only grace he gets. All right, so you guys just heard what she had to say. Um, I'm not buying the whole father. Oh, I'm going to be behind the glass because I'm going to do something to R. Kelly. Um, you were with R. Kelly for years. You literally sat there and continued to defend this man, even when people first were introduced to you and realized who you were. Oh, you stuck up for R. Kelly hard. So I, I don't believe anything she's saying about the father part. So y'all can take that for truth or with a grain of salt. So now what's even more, you know, heartbreaking is that recently their oldest daughter, she came out and she's also in a documentary as well. Documentary trailer dropped and that dropped the other day. And then like two days later, the bombshell came out about the daughter and the daughter is insinuating that R. Kelly touched her as well. So I'm going to go ahead and play the trailer and then also play what the daughter had to say right here. So R. Kelly's daughter, Buku Abi, whose real name is Joanne Kelly, she spoke out in support of her father's accusers in a lengthy Instagram post. So she claims to be devastated. And today R. Kelly was sentenced to prison for his many crimes against underage girls. Nobody wants to be the child of the father that is out here hurting women and children. Everywhere we go, everything we do, it's always gonna have some type of like double meaning under it or someone's gonna read between lines that aren't there. He knows exactly why we can't have the relationship that we would have liked to have with him. Just because you're not a good husband doesn't mean you can't be a good father in the fact that he didn't even try. What he did to me, he did to me. But you didn't have to do it to my damn kids. <laughs> what he has done to those kids there is no other word for him he's a monster i know that there were so I many things so many going on, on. There was some times there I was I would have he was my everything <laughs> for a long time i didn't even want to believe 
that it happened. I didn't know that even if he was a bad person, that he would do something to me. I really feel like that one millisecond completely just changed my whole life. If my son asks questions, I'm going to be as truthful as possible. But I will not be taking my son to a prison to meet his grandfather. <laughs> so after that went viral on social media, um, R. Kelly's attorney put out a statement. And they also did an interview on News Nation with Ashley Bannonfield. So we're going to go ahead and watch what R. Kelly's attorneys have to say about the situation as well. So check this out. I am joined now by R. Kelly's attorney, Jennifer Bonjean. Jennifer, thanks so much for being on. I so appreciate this. Uh, what is R. Kelly's response to this um, blockbuster allegation from his daughter? Mr. Kelly vehemently denies the allegations. These are frankly not really new allegations. His ex-wife made a similar allegation, I don't know, 15 or 20 years ago, the allegation was investigated by the Illinois Department of Children and Family Services. He was under criminal investigation at the time. He's probably the most highly investigated individual on the planet when it comes to these types of claims. And um, the Illinois Department of uh, Family, um, uh, the DCFS, uh, determined that the allegation was unfounded. Um, many years ago. Uh, why it's coming back up, I, I don't really know the circumstances, um, but he certainly denies it. And it's our position that uh, if there was any merit to the claims, certainly charges would have been brought. I can assure you prosecutors would have loved to put his daughter on the stand to accuse him in the many prosecutions they indicted him for. So, Jennifer, I want to give the benefit of the doubt to him. I want to give uh, the benefit of the doubt to her as well. But when you look at the clip in that documentary, she's in tears. And um, I'm just wondering if you or your client think that she's acting. It's not how it works, Ashley. Um, there is not only incredible data around false allegations, um, my own personal 25 years of experience, but also scholarly articles. And um, we know that sometimes people come to believe things based on um, having distorted and contaminated memories, particularly children, and this can be done by their mothers. I mean, this is not, this is not junk science. This stuff exists. I don't know what her motivation is. I don't know what's going through her brain. What I can tell you is that Mr. Uh, Kelly again, denies the allegation. And, you know, the Cook County State's Attorney's Office back in 2019 literally set up a hotline after the Surviving R. Kelly series came out. And anybody could call with an allegation against Mr. Kelly and have their allegation uh, investigated. And what we learned is that people did not always tell the truth when they called. Not every allegation had merit. And so just because someone says it's true and people cry does not necessarily mean it has merit. Okay. Um, again, I'm not. So, I'm not making specific. Uh, you know, I don't know what her allegation, her motivations are. But it, just because someone cries, okay. I don't think you can assume they're telling the truth or that can they remember you, accurately. And I think it's a fair statement. Um, I do want to ask you this, though. It is a. It is a very damning statement against a father, and I can only imagine if he's innocent of this, he would be not only devastated, but, but angry. Um, is there any plan to file a defamation case against her uh, on the part of your client? He is very upset. He's angry, but of course he loves his children. I mean, um, you know, we haven't decided what legal action we would take in response to this, but uh, it's not really a conversation. He's, he's mourning right now. Um, and again, he is someone who has been investigated over and over and over again. And we have to pause and wonder, you know, it's not as if, again, this is really a new allegation. And if there was merit to it, why wasn't he prosecuted is, for it? Is it on the table? Is a defamation case on the table? Is it something you're discussing with R. Kelly? I just, I just answered that question. And what I said is I have not spoken to him about what response we will have. So I don't know what you mean by on the table. I don't take actions without speaking to my clients. So I can't answer that, that question. That was my question. I don't, 
responsible. No, that, yeah, that was know. my question. Have you spoken with him about that? Because you said you haven't decided on a course of action. And that's why I said, I, have you spoken to him about this? Is it possible? We haven't spoken about the legal consequences of the yeah. allegation. Okay, it makes sense. Well, let's catch up again on this. When you've had a chance to speak with your client, I'd like to know um, if you're able to share with us. I'd like to know what is next. All right, so you guys just watched that. His lawyer definitely had an attitude, honey. She definitely was going hard for her client. You know, I see there's a lot of mixed responses on social media, right? So you got half the people who are like, you know what? She's a victim. You have to believe victims. You know what I'm saying? No matter what. Then you have other people saying, okay, why didn't they say all this two, three years ago? Why wasn't she on the stand? Plus, a lot of people do not like the fact that Drea Kelly is involved. They feel like Drea Kelly may have planted seeds in her head. So it's really divided on social media. You have half the people who believe her and half the people who don't. And I feel like this. I feel like people have the right to question anything. Any allegations that are being put out there, the public has a right to question it, no matter who is making the allegations. Now, my issues with Drea... I've been covering her for years on this channel. To me, she does not come off like a sincere person. She comes off like somebody who is looking for a bag, who is clout chasing, who will do anything to stay in the limelight. So I wanna go ahead and play you guys this flashback of a video that I did when she was on The View. And she went on to The View to accuse people of victim shaming. Cause around then she was coming out saying that R. Kelly beat her. And everybody was like, well, that's weird that now you're coming out saying this when you literally will cuss people out in your comment section if they question, why are you still using the last name Kelly? And I don't want to hear that shit about she wants to use the same last name as her kids. Drea Kelly was married. She got married during her reality TV show and still chose to keep her abuser, her, you know, this person who just did all this horrible stuff to her, still chose to keep his name, even though she was remarried to a whole nother man. Make it make sense. Usually when you get remarried, you take on that new man's last name. I if do. you do. I do. You don't keep your ex-husband's last name unless you're still looking for clout. You're still looking to be attached to his greatness, quote unquote, because this was before all the allegations came out. So the whole situation is crazy, but we're going to go ahead and watch this flashback that I found. So in this first flashback that I found, she is talking about suing Surviving R. Kelly, the documentary. So when Lifetime put out their documentary, she was upset. I don't know if because they weren't splitting a bag with her, but she didn't want anything to do with it. Why not? If you're a victim and you want to see justice for not just yourself, your children, and other people, why would you be wanting to sue Lifetime? So let me go ahead and refresh y'all's memory because I think a lot of people have forgotten about Drea Kelly's antics. It's not a beef, it's the fact that there's no support of the women, of the survivors coming forward, because if this is to be a partnership and to bring awareness and we're standing in the gap, and especially me as an advocate, then how do we then leverage the position we're in after having the platform and the documentary? And it was pretty much, we got our ratings, we got our marketing dollars, we got our numbers, goodbye, see you, whatever happens, happens. They put you in the promo for season two, are you okay with that? No, I'm not, and they have a lawsuit coming their way because I told them, I vehemently, I will not, will not be a part of in any shape, form, or fashion. I did not sign any release forms. I told them I will not film. I'm not putting my name on this documentary. Not only do I not advocate what they're doing, Harvey, no disrespect, but people like you who have a platform, during the month of October, no one even reached out to me about Domestic Violence Awareness Month and what I'm doing in my advocacy, yet everyone wants to interview me when it's some bullshit about him. Everyone. All right, so you guys just saw the snippet of that. And like I said, this, this woman just, she's a basket case. She doesn't know she's coming or going, okay? So at one point in time, she even wanted to sue the R. Kelly documentary, which was supposed to be helping the survivors. She felt like she wasn't getting enough attention, money. They just used her. She's just all over the place. So now I have more receipts of why people just do not rock with Drea and they don't know if this whole situation with the daughter is even, you know, real or not because of the antics of the mother. My ex-husband R. Kelly. People actually said, oh, she's coming out because she needs money or she didn't say anything because she got money. There's not enough money in the world for a woman to stay and be abused. This is a new narrative that they're spinning that, you know, people like myself who questioned Andrea Kelly 
are victim shaming her. And this is what irks me with this whole victim shaming mentality, this whole shaming word. People asking legitimate questions is not victim shaming, okay? Because like I told y'all in my initial video about Andrea Kelly, I do have to question her because you were on a show, even after all of this abuse, you were on a show called Hollywood Exes, still promoting your ex-husband. You were doing interviews, still telling folks to go buy tickets to his show because it pays your bills, okay? years this woman sat by even as recently as a year ago you guys can watch my first Andrea Kelly video she was cussing out anybody who brought stuff up to her about R. Kelly who asked her opinion on R. Kelly and all these girls and all you know these girls coming out she was going off on folks even demanding that folks go and see R. Kelly in concert because it keeps her lights and her bills paid let me go ahead and refresh your memory feels good and keep going to his concerts and buying them tickets and them CDs. Boo, that keeps my lights on, girl. Honey, they free out here. What? Y'all telling me what he is doing in his life, who cares? I'm his act. He can do whatever the fuck he want to do in his life. That's his life. Um, I don't understand why people like to spread venom. I'm quick to say how y'all don't like my ex and he this and he that, but then your dumb ass will get up and spread the same bullshit. You were saying a lot of really strange stuff for somebody to now come out and say, look, I was abused. Oh, what was me? I was abused. Like I said, I believe she was abused. R. Kelly's a sick person. I don't think she's lying at all. But people have the right to question you without you trying to flip it around and say that folks were shaming you. People have every right. All right, honey, that was a flashback within a flashback of a flashback, okay? I've been on these streets for a long time, and one thing about me is I've, I've always kept it 100, okay? I've always kept it a buck. Um, so, again, I think this entire situation with the daughter is unfortunate. You know, she says she was abused by her father. All I can do is take her word for it, you know what I'm saying, and let it come out in the wash. I don't know if they're going to take it to court or, you know, he's ready in jail for 19 years, but... You know, I, I do understand why people are questioning it because the timing is odd. You know, Drea's coming out with a book. Now they have a documentary out. They're trying to do their own documentary because they didn't really get a check from Lifetime. So all of it does look suspect. And I see why people feel like, you know what? I'm not really buying anything these folks are selling. I've been over Drea and her drama, but I hope that the children, you know, get help and counseling and, you know, get the support that they need because at the end of the day, children do not choose their parents. They don't choose their mother, their father. They don't ask to be here. So I feel really bad that they had to grow up in R. Kelly's shadow with all the controversy and everything else. So I, I pray that the children find healing and I hope that Drea Kelly gets help. So anyways, in other news, okay, I'm just so tired of all these damn abusers. If it's not R. Kelly, it's Diddy. Now we have a situation with Kanye West. Now, you guys remember, I think it was about two months ago when I did the live stream about Kanye West um, and him being sued and also the singer Nikki Hinton coming out and talking about her experience with Kanye and Diddy and how they try to drug her and things like that. Well, the lady that was initially suing Kanye is coming out she has amended her lawsuit and she's adding more to the lawsuit then there's also a man suing kanye he's a fixer and he's spilling all of kanye west's tea so this entire situation is getting even crazier with kanye west okay so in this tmz article that just came out they're saying kanye west's hired fixer to follow bianca investigates the kardashians new lawsuit alleges so they're saying here, Kanye West is being sued by a man claiming to be his former director of intelligence who has alleged that the rapper ordered him to orchestrate investigations on both wife Bianca Sensori and former in-laws, the Kardashians. In new court documents obtained by TMZ, the man who is suing anonymously, anonymously is John Doe, claims the rapper never paid him for the work done over several pay periods and caused him emotional distress. Per the lawsuit in December 2002, Ye had initially hired the staffer to be his campaign manager for his presidential run, but later reworked his role to be the Yeezy's director of intelligence. So basically, Kanye West is running his own version of Mossad. He is now Mossad. This is insane. 
They go on to say the man claims the position required him to be responsible for handling Ye's NDAs and other investigations, which included closer looks at the Kardashian and Bianca. The man says he was tasked with hiring private investigators to tell Bianca without her knowledge whenever she traveled solo, including during visits to her family in Australia. He tapped into the Kardashians supposed various criminal links, says Jay believed his former in-laws participated in sex trafficking. So it seems like everybody's being exposed, including the Kardashians. This lawsuit is accusing them of basically sex trafficking and they're saying that Kanye is the one who set this investigator to basically investigate the Kardashians. So this is insane. And let's not forget, Corey Gamble's name keeps coming up as well, um, you know, on these internet streets because he was there when Kim, because he was one of the first ones there when Kim Porter died. He has a very close relationship with Diddy and, you know, Justin Bieber and the Kardashians. So I believe the rabbit hole with Corey Gamble definitely goes deep, okay? Dozens of photographs on the internet of Corey Gamble with P. Diddy and his young children that were taken years and years ago. Corey has stated on multiple occasions that he helped raise P. Diddy's children and had a brother-sister-like friendship with Kim Porter, P. Diddy's now deceased ex. We talked about in earlier videos, Corey Gamble was even on the scene when coroners arrived to retrieve Kim Porter's lifeless body out of her home. It really does seem like Corey Gamble has more than just a friendship with P. Diddy and his family. It definitely seems to be more of a familial bond. Then they go on to say, Doe alleges on May 2024, Ye began exhibiting erratic behavior, possibly as a result of his alleged nitrous oxide usage. Um, remember Milo came out and he basically said that Kanye is in bed with some crazy dentist. He's giving him all the nitrous gas that he wants. There was that video of him, you know, talking about how he's high on nitrous gas. So this is what this lawsuit is alleging. Brian Garcia, this Ye, I'm on the nitrous. And I was, take, I was at the dentist's office the other day, I was taking a nitrous oxide, I suggested if anybody's like stressed out. Uh. They said after implementing titanium grills in his teeth, also the docs around the same time, um, Doe says that Ye began laying off employees involved in the leadership of the Yeezy brand. And that's him with the teeth in. Doe also claims that his working relationship came to a head with Kanye after he shared complaints from the Donda Academy staffer who alleged that children had been abused at the school and nothing was done to report the problem. Doe says Kanye West responded to the news by yelling and cursing at him as well as threatening the man with great bodily harm. So this is very frightening. When you're talking about sex trafficking, this man was running a school at one point and children being physically abused. What was really going on at this Donda Academy? Kanye West's elusive private school Donda Academy is facing a lawsuit for several labor code and discrimination violations. Among the many bizarre allegations in the lawsuit is a claim that the Christian Academy only fed students sushi for lunch every day. The lawsuit also claims that students were not allowed to bring any outside food into the school or go outside for recess. It goes on to say the Academy refused to use any chemical-based cleaners and instead used, quote, acid water in classrooms and did not employ a cleaning staff or have janitorial services. It also alleges that the school did not have a proper disciplinary system in place, and as a result, many students were bullied while enrolled. The lawsuit was filed in Los Angeles Superior Court against Ye, Donda Academy, and three school directors. The two plaintiffs, who are mother and daughter, say they were the only black women employed by the school and were fired in March after complaining about the alleged health and safety conditions. They also claim that they were discriminated against based on their race. So then they go on to say, Doe also alleges that Kanye's enforcers sent him threats in the aftermath of the confrontation, which he says triggered his PTSD from his time in the military. John Doe is seeking an unspecified amount of damages. We've reached out to Kanye's rep for comment. So far, no word back. So that was just the first lawsuit that came out the other day. And then he got hit with an amended lawsuit by the initial lady who had sued him a few months ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and read that to you guys as well. Okay, so this is a former assistant and this is what's being noted. It's on TMZ, it's on Daily Mail, New York Post. So there's plenty of 
you know, resources you guys can check with um, on this updated lawsuit. So they're saying Kanye West drugged and raped his former assistant at a party with Diddy. She claims in a horrifying new lawsuit against the disgraced rapper. Influencer and former OnlyFans Laura Piscata sued West in June for allegedly sexually harassing and stalking her while she worked for him in 2021 to 2022. Now in an 88-page updated lawsuit filed on Friday night and obtained by the Daily Mail makes dozens of new disturbing claims. I'm just going to say her first name because her last name is confusing me. Uh, Lauren detailed that Wes's alleged sick sexual obsession, his fetish of also wanting to sleep with his target's mother, including his wife Bianca Sensori's family. So they're saying that Kanye wanted to sleep with his current wife, who I believe may be divorcing him. Bianca, he wanted to sleep with her mother. Like Holly Weird is just sick and degenerate at this point. It's insane. So then they go on to say... She also claims that West promised to pay her $4 million a year salary, bragged about it to Jay-Z, then wrongfully fired her and, re and reneged on the $3 million severance payout. West denied the claims in her original lawsuit, calling them baseless and accused her of blackmail and extortion, but has yet to file a defense. And this is her, you know, pretty lady, nice body, but nothing about this screams assistant this screams sex worker to me sex worker let me put you in a position of assistance so i can fuck that's the vibe i get from this but maybe it's just me okay so this is what else they go on to say but her most serious claims was that years before she worked for him he drugged and raped her and only allegedly confessing in his last weeks as her boss Laura claimed that she met Wes when he invited her client to a studio session and party he co-hosted with his friend Sean Diddy Combs. Wes announced that everyone at the event at, San, at the Santa Monica studio had to drink if they wanted to stay. She was handed a beverage by Wes himself. Laura, after a few sips, suddenly started feeling disoriented and began to slip into an altered and highly impaired state, the lawsuit read. She felt less in control of her body and speech, and that is where her memories of that night escaped her, claimed. The next day, she felt ashamed and embarrassed that she couldn't remember the evening and her musician client refused to discuss what happened. Laura claimed that she only learned years later why the client was too traumatized and disturbed to speak about that night. Now remember, the musician client was that girl, Nikki, that came out a few months ago as well. Then they go on to say, after years of believing she was drugged by a studio assistant but escaped without being molested, she allegedly learned the truth from West. She claims that not long before he fired her in November 2022, he was enraged about a comment his ex-wife made about him and Laura having an affair while still married. The ex-wife's name was withheld in the lawsuit, but West's only wife besides Sensor besides Sensori was Kim Kardashian, who he divorced in early 2022. Laura says that West wanted to send Kardashian a text to clear things up with her, and it appeared that she was under the wrong oppression about them. However, she claimed that West told her that she couldn't send a message denying that they were ever intimate due to what happened at the Santa Monica party. We did kind of hook up a little one time, the lawsuit claims West told her. West then immediately proceeded to reminisce about the time he was referring to where he hooked up with Laura after she had been drugged, the lawsuit claims. Laura claimed that West told Kardashian they hooked up but left out the true nature and the severity of, of what he did to her. Had Kardashian been told the truth and known that Laura was in fact drugged and sexually assaulted by Kanye West, she would never have made that comment, the lawsuit claimed. A shocked Laura claimed that she told Wes that she had no memory of the night and he laughed saying the women love to say they don't remember then change the subject. Laura's lawsuit claimed that Wes's true nature was predatory, aggressive, compulsive, vulgar, perverse, and frighteningly cultivated. 
It called him a premeditated, sadistic rumor who uses fame and position to feed his insatiable sexual gratification and animalistic desires that have very little boundaries. The lawsuit claimed that he often had sex with employees and had a rotating list of guests at his Yeezy company offices. Employees were ordered to construct makeshift bedrooms consisting of mattresses on the floor, pillows and blankets in a room, or even just a closet. He also used the staff bathrooms and changing rooms, the lawsuit claimed. West has a kink for wanting to have sex with the mothers of his sexual targets as well as them, which he frequently talked about the lawsuit claimed. He allegedly sent Laura screenshots on September 28th of 2022 of the text conversation between him and Sensori wanting to have sex with her mother. What in the incest is going on here? Imagine them having a conversation. Imagine this man is your husband and he's telling you that he wants to sleep with your mother. Like, that is insane. So, at this point, I wouldn't be shocked if he slept with multiple Kardashians. Not just Kim, but maybe, you know, Chloe and the mama. Because they all give me ancestral vibe. Remember, the game even bragged about sleeping with Kim, Courtney, and Chloe. So, I would not be surprised if this is all some freaky ancestral nonsense that he's been involved with with the Kardashians, allegedly. And now he's trying to, you know, implement that onto his new relationships as well. Because this is just really disturbing. In the text message, it says, I want to fuck your mom before she leaves, he wrote the lawsuit claims. And according to the filing, he asked Laura, should I add, I meant, I want to watch me fuck your mom? Another time, he allegedly texts Laura on September 13th of 2022 about an A-list fashion model that he was determined to have sex with and requested she model for his sunglass campaign. A young A-list fashion model, better than me, than a different fashion model. How do I tell her I need to fuck her bad? Another time on June 14th, 2022, he allegedly texts her about a sexual encounter with the model. I feel like you could be a spectator. I feel like she needs an audience, a beautiful audience, LOL. He wrote her in a text the lawsuit claimed. Then they go on to say one time Laura informed him of a delay with a Japanese work visa and she claimed that he replied with a bizarre string of texts. So I'll come back to LA. I do want to see my kids, he wrote, before reverting to type and there's so much pussy in LA, I may rent a room, take the honey pack, drink some tequila, take appointments, he allegedly added. I'm a great guy and a dad, but I love bad bitches. I love to fuck the shit out of bad, ho out of bad bitches and make them fall in love too. Then Laura claims that Kanye used his connections at his companies like Adidas and Gap to get work visas to traffic women into the U.S. for sex. This is a disturbing ass rabbit hole. Wow. They were given obscure job titles at his companies and had them sign NDAs about their experience. Oh, it seems like the similar job title that he gave this OnlyFans model. Because like I said, everything about her, none of this screams professional work environment. I'm just saying. So then she goes on to say, he brazenly he was brazenly open with Laura and other staff about it, giving them grotesque details and always filmed and always filmed it so he could get the full picture, the lawsuit claimed. The lawsuit claimed that West often offered up his sexual partners, employees, and women that he trafficked as gifts to his friends and colleagues, both to make himself look and feel cool and to gain an upper hand in business negotiations. One was called a gift straight from Russia. Lord claimed that he tried to gift her too, but without success, including one time that the man he offered her to was an A-list celebrity warned her about it. The lawsuit detailed how West frequently hosted sex parties at hotels like Nobu, uh, Ryokan Malibu Hotel, Beverly Hills Wardrop, Wardorf Astoria, San Cedro Ranch in Monticello, California. She claims that he made up elaborate schemes to lure her and other women there usually claiming that he needed something. Often it was sex honey, a sexual enhancement product he allegedly took and required Laura to always have an ample supply on hand. Those are those honey packs. I talked about them 
a few streams ago. So it sounds like Kanye West is definitely addicted to these honey packs. Um, then they go on to say she claimed that he once openly admitted his plan was for her to bring him some so he could involve her in one of the parties. He texted her and yeah, I wanted you to bring honey and stay, but it didn't work out lol. What you want for your B-Day, the lawsuit claimed. The lawsuit claimed that Wes had ever-changing moods and that meant that he would either respond to her shutting down his advances and invitations to sex parties with offers of, of luxurious gifts or intense anger and frustration and assignments that were difficult or impossible just to punish her. So then on another post, um, she also talked about Kanye West saying this, um, see my problem is I be wanting to fuck, but then after I fuck, I want a girl to tell me how hard they've been fucked while I'm fucking them. Then I want her to cheat on me. Laura also claimed to have received intimate photos of current and former Yeezy employees, both men and women from West. In addition, she claimed to have witnessed the Go Digger rapper masturbate next to her before falling asleep. He also allegedly got angry with her for shutting down advances to date or have sex with him. So her, her lawsuit that she updated is pretty disturbing. And she doesn't say that Diddy did anything to her. She's mainly accusing Kanye West. But she's saying that she was drugged. And remember, Nikki was saying in that live stream that, you know, she was pretending to drink because she could tell something was going on with her manager and with Laura. So she didn't end up drinking the drink. Um, Diddy kept looking at me and Kanye kept looking at Laura and like they were exchanging glances. And I'm like, they're like watching me strangely. And I'm like, OK, let me pretend to drink. And like, I'm not actually doing it. Um, and like that seemed to like make them happy, like me, like pretending to like to join in and immediately I'm like there's something fucking in this drink there's something there's something in this drink um and I didn't know what to do uh and I like my manager was like across the room but like close enough but like not next to me so I couldn't like whisper to her but I wanted to tell her I'm like hey don't don't fucking drink this there's something wrong with this but I couldn't so I reached for my phone and I start to type and Kanye takes the phone out of my hands and he's like who are you texting like you don't need to text anyone like we're having a party and I was like okay and he like puts it on one of the speakers and I'm like fuck <laughs> now what do I do um like I, I don't I don't know what to do and I see my manager take a sip and I'm like fuck two sips and I watch her face flush and we also have Mark Curry doing an interview with Arda Dialogue, saying that this is how Diddy got down. Again, we've talked about how Clive Davis allegedly was the one who, you know, showed Diddy how to get down and, you know, be the deviant that he is. So who's to say that Diddy didn't also show Kanye West how to be the deviant that they're alleging that he is? So let me go ahead and play that um, video of Mark Curry talking about Diddy, you know, drugging bottles. And we go and get to the VIP or all of these girls come around the VIP and they just be standing there and like, let me tell you something, man, I'm going to get back with you. We got to rewind this back. We used to go to the, when we go to the club, we used to have these bottles, right? And on this bottle, they'd be, they'd be regular Moet bottles. On them bottles right there, they'd be to have something to make the girls be real, real slippery and all of this kind of stuff. So when you get up, they'd be like, don't touch them bottles right there and only drink them bottles right there. So we already knew what the drill was. You just don't mess with them bottles, right? Then all of the girls is in the club after a while. They all running, look, opening up their mouth like little birds. He's running around just popping pills in their mouth. Pop, pill, 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 pill. And then that was the party. I used to, I used to, you know, we used to be on the road, you know, you'd be like, yo, let me go over to my puff room, see what they doing. And you knock on puff door, he'd be sitting there damn near butt naked. You ever just had a grown ass man answer his hotel door butt naked and they'd be like, come on in. You'd be like, mm, I'll come back. Bro, put some clothes on. What are you doing? Walk. I don't want to see you naked. Grown man stuff. Yo, that's kind of disrespectful. So when you get, that's, that's called the test off. How you make sure you breaking in. Yo, call, call the artist up here to the room. Tell them I'm going to have a meeting by my tub. He be in there by the tub and stuff, soaking and stuff. But at neck, you be like, how the hell am I supposed to have a meeting with a neck, butt neck in the tub? Mm. Yeah. 
Honey, he definitely said a whole lot, okay? So again, the deviancy in this industry, I don't care if we're talking about music, Hollywood, television, even children's television, because we had the whole scandal with Nickelodeon and Disney. Um, it's just getting even more and more disturbing. At this point, nothing that people are alleging even surprises me anymore. So with that being said, I look forward to hearing from you guys, tea sippers. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, I want to know what you guys think about this entire situation with R. Kelly, um, his daughter accusing him of possible essay, Drea Kelly dropping a new book, new documentary coming out. And then how do you guys feel about this updated lawsuit from Laura concerning Kanye West and how now she is confirming that she was drugged at a Kanye West Diddy shindig. So it looks like, you know, the lawyer said, Tony Busby, he said a lot of more famous names are going to be going down with Diddy. We had last week where it came out that Devontae Swing is not being sued in an updated lawsuit with the woman who was initially suing just Diddy before. Now she's suing Aaron Hall and Devontae Swing in her updated lawsuit. So it looks like a lot of these victims are remembering things more and more and they're updating their lawsuits. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. So like I said, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to hit this video with a like and feel free to share this video as well. And I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all enjoy your weekend. Bye. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.